So when we talk about dangerous good, I want to focus there um, about the or anything we call the Orange Book or the UNRDDG or similar things like that. I'm not talking about the we, even though it's some the word classification will come up, and then we're not talking about the hazardous substances that you know, like the GHS of the world, where there are a lot of the speakers are going to talk about it. I want to focus really on just the transport side, and we're going to see why that is an important distinction later on for China. So what kind of agency in China is regulating or have a hand in enforcing some of the rules and regulations on transport of goods? Well, on the left-hand side, you can see up there, that, you know, basically your usual suspect, Ministry of Transport, Civil Aviation Administration, Maritime Safety Administration. But also there's a post to department that kind of regulate or enforce rules about what you can send through the post, what kind of goods um, that is. We also have on the right hand side a myriad of agency that I sort of kind of try to group them together as best as I can. So we have the public security agency, there are your police, your firefighters, and then your um, ASIQ, uh, Ministry of Environment Protections, and various other agencies that also have an interest in regularly enforcing some of these rules. In terms of some of coordination efforts, this nice picture kind of show you where the, it, you know, the uh, authority uh, of each of the agency lies. So basically, the Maritime Safety Administration regulates all the cargoes uh, that are basically being shipped to China. But once it gets into the dock, not surprisingly, the port authorities will then have those controls. In terms of emergency response, here are some of the agencies that also have various responsibilities when an incident happens. Um, SAW, for example, keeps, have to keep a record of the emergency response plan. And then it coordinates with the various parties when something happens. And then the fire department will also come in. Um, Ministry of Environment, also look at some of the monitoring and control impact on the environment. And finally, the equivalent of the Ministry of Health will also look at you know, rescue and identify to toxic and health hazards. Before we get, look at the regulations in China, and there are many, I uh, just want to show you this little chart. In China, there's not only there's national regulation and standards that you must follow, there's also the, some local provincial laws that, that may also affect the transport or the storage of your goods. Now, a lot of time, maybe you send your products into one port versus another, and the rules and regulations of, some of those ports may or may not cha change, and that also may be why your product now is no longer, you know, can enter the country, because maybe perhaps you didn't follow all the necessary rules for that particular port. And anyone who worked in China knows that not only you have to follow some of the rules and the regulations and the laws out there, you also have to look at the standards. What are the different standards? These are the, some of them are general standards, some of them relating to classification criteria, laboratory, uh, laboratory testing criteria, packaging, how to pack your uh, the cargo, also about management, inspection, how that should be done, also just some operational relating to the transport of dangerous goods. Now there are about 400 different standards, give or take a few, that regulate or sort of talking about the transfer of dangerous goods. I just want to pause and, t and say that again. F over 400 different standards, that's a lot of standards, to having to go through and wade through and read. Now granted, most of us are not going to have to read all of them because most of us will, we will have a logistical department or most of the time you would just send to a shipper. Right? So, and the shipper will have to take care of all of the packaging maybe for you. But what you might need to do is basically do some classification, get the correct label, and put it on there. But the idea is that if you work with a logistical company who send you or a shipper, making sure that they also know the rules and the regulations and the standard they need to comply, or at least to tell you what you need to do, how to pack your uh, boxes or your cargo so that it won't get stopped or there won't be issues at the port or wherever it's going. The good news is that China does try, or at least the authority do try to kind of align some of its regulations, um, some of the standards, to the international standards. Again, because China has its own, have its own sovereignty, and like many other countries, it's like to do its own thing sometimes. So it's not always the exact copy or the exact match of these international documents. I want to take a look at an example of the, you know, the transport by air. So basically I say there's a provision on administration of transport of dangerous goods for civil aviation in China. For, the sh for most of the shipping that you're going to do, or at least the work that many of the people in this room will do, that's probably where you're going to want to go and look at it if it's shipped by air. And this 
these provisions, they basically, like I said before, follow the technical instructions. And China also has its own list, but then there are also certain items, and here are two examples of those that are specific to China. And um, so they do have its own courts. The list to see how they actually line up, we will see that, you know, for example, I added the, um, the list basically prohibited this particular chemical for passenger bits for cargo, there's also a maximum limit. Whereas in China, that chemical is just prohibited for, to transport by air. So what are some of the challenges working in China? Not, so we talked about the volumes of the regulations already, like how the multitude of the standards, but there's also fundamentally, there's a, it's still quite unclear the definition between hazardous and dangerous goods. It's not quite clear what they, when they meant is to be for transport, when, when they meant is really just for sort of the, the regular hazardous substances and the chemical management. And because of the volume of the regulations and the standards, this, this can be a little bit disjointed among all of them. Um, maybe they, they are sometimes overlapping, sometimes there are gaps, they don't really quite fit with each other nicely package, sometimes they even conflict, and then within that, then you have to work with the various authorities to making sure what do you have to do depending on the situation, depending on what is it that you're shipping or you're storing. There are some efforts of cleaning up or at least trying to harmonize or revamp sort of the system a little bit. So there's the safety management measure for road transport of dangerous goods. I mentioned about the unclear definition before. Well, these measures actually give a very clear definition of what it means to be a dangerous good and what it means to be hazardous chemicals. Now they still refer to some of the standard when they talking about it, but at least it's a clearer guidance or a clearer concept of, you know, if you're looking at these terms. Also there's clear rules for exemption and exceptions um, when you're shipping these products. The other efforts go on, basically road transport regulation for dangerous goods. This regulation basically tracks I mean, you can see some of the topic they're covering, but really re they reference, you know, the UN RTDG as well as the uh, European Agreement of uh, Dangerous Goods by road. So there is an effort to create and harmonize not just Chinese regulations and standards, but also um, creating sort of this framework that aligning with the uh, with the international community. Um, many of these. Standards are being revised, and here's an example of some of the um, revision that's being happening. So you can see this particular standard, and on the orange part, I've kind of compared the various sections that kind of match up between this Chinese standard and the um, dangerous good, um, the ADR, the European Agreement on Dangerous Good by Road, and then the yellow. I mean, the green part are basically just different sections, but it's the same thing. So out of all the sections, these actually track very closely to each other. But at least we see is that there's an attempt to kind of create harmonization within the country as well as the international community. That doesn't mean that, you know, our job is done. That just means that there's more things for us to look at and kind of compare. But I think the road forward is, is, is a good one. Thank you.